Welcome to another unboxing video from theplayersaid.com. My name's Alexander, and today we're taking a look at a new game from Worthington called 1944 Battle of the Bulge. That's a game by Dan um, Forney. Forney? Sorry. Uh, so, this, another Bulge game, right? There's a trillion of them. Uh, you know how they go with uh, the Germans pushing forward, breaking the lines, trying to break through all of the Allied lines uh, to go um, both west and north. However, uh, weather's going to change, things are going to get bogged down, supply's going to be hard, and then the Allies are going to um, be able to counterattack, basically. So, this one, however, <laughs> apart from it'll have the uh, the nice Worthington production, its thing is it's, it's a single map, and the hex is quite large, so it's even smaller than a regular single mapper, but also it has um, a two hour play time. Um, and with, e even with some of the more complicated Worthington Games titles, not that complicated. So I'm very interested to play this one, especially if we can do it in a single short session. I think that's, that's, a, that's a good positive for games on the bulge, which usually take forever. So there's a lot of stuff that's different on here. And um, so we do have a little pad to start with. And your pad has, it's got a little mini version of the map on it, and some, uh, di like, victory outcomes, whether or not it was solitaire, and then your your victory schedule there, so you're going to use this to track all of that. Are these double-sided? Yes, they are. So you've got a lot of those in here. Uh, these are some variable objectives. Okay, good, and they're, they're all uh, the same on the back, so you can, you can play the historical operation, or you can play a couple of different versions where the victory points are different, and you can do these hidden so that the Allied player doesn't know exactly what the German player is trying to do. So you, you, you can play regular balls with it, but you can also do some ahistorical stuff, which is always, it's nice to have something where it's not, it's so predictable what the enemy's going to be trying to do, at least. I enjoy that kind of thing. Um, so, as always, Worthington provides you with two sets of the rule books, which I really appreciate. I wish more games would do this, especially games that actually need it. Uh, <laughs> Worthington's games are typically simple enough where you just need one and you can teach and learn it really quickly and you don't have to reference the rules. But, you know, I wish bigger titles from bigger companies would have that, where you, you do have your nose in the rulebook a bit more. Uh, but the rules look like a very decent font size. Diagrams and illustrations of all of the different unit types. A good chunk of text because this is a pretty, it's, you know, it's a it's a war game, so you do have to have some of those rules in here. But you know, big terrain effects chart. We've got some little tables to roll on, bits and pieces, and then we have your um, procedures for doing the variable objectives and setup and things like that as well. And then we have a little example of moving and attacking on here. So. You get two copies of those, so you can both have a copy. Learn this really easy by both having the rules handy. Uh, we do have our OOBs, Orders of Battle. We have one for Allied, one for German. Are these double-sided? Uh, yes, they are, and I believe this is for Setup. So this is this is Allied Setup, German Setup. Let's see, did this... Is it like this? No. Is it the other way around? How are we doing this? What am I looking at? Is it this way? No, it was the other way. Either way, uh, you got your Germans are going to be on the uh, the eastern edge of the board going west. So now we come to the counters, and this is something that I'm very excited for this game. Uh, is that the counters here are all really big. These are very large counters. They're not. I don't think they're quite one inch. They or oh, they could be. Those could be one inch counters. If they're not one inch, they're very close to it, but they're really big, and they're very clear. I I really appreciate the large numbers, the large sizes of those. If you're going to have these nice counters, I like to have very clear artwork to go along with them. Oops, he says, throwing it off the table. I don't know if you can see this. If we catch the light, these also have that kind of linen finish that you get on some cards. It's really high quality, is basically what I'm getting at with those. Oh, that's interesting. Those ones don't. Oh no, they do. It's just a bit more subtle. That's odd. So these ones kind of don't. They do. It's there, but it's much more subtle. And I don't. I don't know if we can tell the difference in this one. These ones, you can see where the light catches all of those tiny different undulations on those. 
That's very interesting. But yeah, these punches, I mean, they fall out of the counters, right? Out of the sprues. And I'll just show you these. Basically zero, and I do mean zero, tufts or nubs or sprue gates. It, it, there's nothing on those. So you just punch this and you set it up and go. Absolutely love that. Really, really happy with those. And then, uh, okay, uh, look at the map. It's quite tight in this box, I will say that, that is. Uh, and, all right, we'll open up the map in a second. This is the other really, really nice part about this game, uh, is you have a fully custom-made uh, counter tray insert. And it has different sections to organize your counters, presumably into the different formations. You'll be able to set those up really easily as well. And then some holding boxes for the the little round markers and bits and pieces. We do have a bag of dice, which, as always, sealed for freshness. So we have a regular white D6, and then I believe that this is for, these are for combat resolution, and you've got infantry units, and you've got armor units, and I, you'll probably chuck the amount of dice based on attack values and things, I'm not quite sure, but each side, each dice has one infantry symbol, one armor symbol, and that's it. There's four blanks on each. So you get a, you know, a little handful of those. Those are really nice looking, actually. They kind of look like uh, what are those hot tamales? Those little American disgusting cinnamon candies. They do look like they're quite edible and tasty, even though hot tamales are disgusting. And if you like them, then I apologize to you for your own bad taste. All right, let's look at the map. Here's the map. 1944 Battle of the Bulge. It is fully mounted and it is a 22 by 34. So it's nice production value, he says, putting it upside down. Let's turn it around. And this is the map. It's the color palette is exactly what you might expect from a bulge game, where it's you know it's winter game, so you have the the kind of blank canvas is the those white snowy hexes and the, a ton of forest. Uh, with some of those darker green markers. This darker green stuff is rough terrain. And all of that is listed on the little terrain effects chart up here. And I wonder if that's just reprinted from the one in the manual. I hope so. You do have a little explanation of the counters and what all the different numbers mean as well. And um, we've got charts for out of supply, resource points, and then we have our tracks. So in here's something that's a little bit interesting from a, from a graphical standpoint. We have an allied turn track, and up here there is a German separate turn track. And that tells you your replacement points on it, when you have air cover, the different weather types, as well as you know the turn numbers and all that kind of stuff as well. So I think the, uh, the allied replacement points um, start pretty low and then ramp up. And then the German ones obviously start pretty high and then, and then degrade over time as well. And I presume their reinforcement schedule is not nearly as tough as well. But then you also have, you have this little replacement point track. So you get six RPs, you get a little RP marker, and so you're going to spend those so you can keep track of how many you've spent when you get to that phase. But this is the map. Everything's very clear, very crisp. Um, the names of the towns are the only thing that you might be like, it kind of gets a little bit lost, but at least these are, these are outlined in a little rectangle, so it's really not that bad. Um, if they were a different color, it might be a tiny bit easier to read, but other than that, this is a really clear map, and, and I, that's what I appreciate in maps. I want the map to be functional, happens to look nice as well. Uh, and so it, it that it aids play a map should aid play and make it easy to play it by having clear terrain clear numbers clear lines of roads and things like that so that altogether is 1944 Battle of the Bulge from Worthington. Apparently it plays in two hours. That's what the back of the box is. And if there's one company where I actually do trust their times, it is Worthington. Because um, they, 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 I don't know, just from experience, they are fairly accurate. And I've talked to a couple of other people and they seem to agree that generally that is a, a pretty accurate time. So it, if we can get a decent bulge game in a couple of hours, I think it would be very interesting. So appreciate you guys tuning in. 1944 Battle of the Bulge from Worthington. I've been Alexander from theplayersaid.com.